I have a new games console. It's a NES on a chip handheld gaming device. This is the Player 2 gamepad. The gamepad is vile and spongy and generally horrible in every possible way. So let's try to turn this into an Amiga gamepad. This is just a simple straight through cable. This is connected to here. I've used a sharp tool to uh, scrape through the tracks here. That's not my best joint. So this feels just as bad as it ever did, which is right. I hate that. These are micro switches. That will do. Yeah, that's not very good actually. It needs a shim of some kind. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I've managed to bodge the gamepad into working with the keys. I 3D printed some shims to give the right spacing inside the keys and as a result they are nice and positive. The magic number turned out to be 1.5 millimeters of padding between the, uh, the bottom of the hard plastic keycap and the switch itself. It could probably do with a little bit more. It's a little, it's a little rattly, but it works. It's nice and clicky and it feels very positive. So I will just take that apart and show you the bits. So there's the PCB. So we have here, uh, this is the circular piece that goes on the bottom of the D-pad. You can see it's got the snubs which push against the key switches. The, uh, these buttons are a little bit different. Each one has one of these little caps that fits over the whole, uh, the post in the middle of the key. And uh, yeah, that works fine. The bad news is that after making something of a dog's dinner of the cable, I have discovered that it is not a straight through nine pin cable. It's only got four wires in it. And not all of these pins are actually connected to anything, which means it's completely useless for connecting up the uh, gamepad. As I need, well, I have the pin out here. Uh, I need uh, seven, four, five, six, seven pins. And this is five, including the ground shield. Uh, well, yeah, the good news is, is at least I've got a connector here that I can plug into the Amiga. It's, it's now small enough. Now I've carved all the bits off it. That's not supposed to be in there. So I'm going to have to do a bit of thinking about that. So uh, we now don't need the rubber mat, but I think I'm going to keep at least some of it, uh, partly to fill these holes, which are a bit ugly, but also to see if we can do something about the rattling. So let's do a bit of surgery. Like so. And this can go down here. Now let's try the uh, PCB. See, I'm hoping that that will provide a little bit of cushioning. Hopefully it's not too thick and I don't need to adjust all the pads again. I actually forgot to test it with that in place because obviously I had to cut it to make it fit. Still works fine. It's uh, still quite rattly. Uh, it may be possible to jam some of the mats in, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to live with it like that. Okay, so that's actually the gamepad part is basically done. I now need to try and connect this up to a connector somehow. I've got the connector from here. 
Um, I would need to pull that apart in order to get at the actual pins. So, uh, in order to solder stuff onto it. I do have one of these. Uh, this was the one that's going to go on the gamepad itself. Honestly, this is not a good fit to plug into the Amiga. And the biggest problem is trying to get hold of a piece of 9-core wire. Technically 10-core if you include the ground. So, having done a bit of thinking, I've got lots of these. These are Ethernet cables. They are 8-way and they are twisted pairs so they come in uh, four pairs they're twisted together to reduce interference. That gives me eight wires, so that's not enough for a proper straight through nine pin cable because I need nine pins plus ground. But eight is fine for the gamepad. The, of the gamepad buttons, we're not using button five here, which is not connected. And we're not using pin 7, which is plus 5 volts. I did go and look it up, and all these are active low, so I need to ground them in order to make them register. So that all we need are four wires for the directions, two wires for the buttons, and one for ground. That's seven, which we can get out of one of these cables. Because this isn't enough for a nine pin straight through. I'm not going to try to wire one up and then put this on the gamepad itself. So what I'll do instead, I think, is just to connect this straight into the gamepad uh, and solder it to these terminals. It would probably have been better had I known this ahead of time so that I could solder this directly onto the PCB, but honestly, I think having it like this is easier. And then the other end, I can attach to this, and I'll need to rip this apart to get access to the actual pins. There's a big chunk of resin in which everything is potted inside. And this, this bit will actually pull off, and you can see the pins and the, uh, the framework that the pins are attached to. So, I'm going to dismantle this just to see if that will work. Because if it doesn't, I'll have to change my plans and come back. So here is the connector after I've ripped it apart. It's reasonably nice. It doesn't have a shell, which is a pain. Uh, I can probably 3D print one without too much difficulty. It'll be nasty, but it ought to work. And here is the Ethernet cable I have decided to destroy. Uh, new in the bag. This one has, uh, it looks like uh, old-fashioned crimped connectors rather than the moulded on ones and I'm hoping that this will mean that it's a bit easier to get at the wires. So can I just pull this off? Just save me having to split the wires. Nah, apparently not. Okay. And inside there are the for pairs. And oddly enough, Ethernet cables never seem to be particularly tight. There's actually quite a lot of slack space in here. So let's just expose the wires. To about there. Trying to get the sleeve cut reasonably tidily.
Well, that's not reasonably tidily, but it'll do. OK, so the, each pair is twisted together, but we don't care about that. So we've got orange and orange striped, brown and brown striped, green and green striped, and blue and blue striped. And we get the pin out out, which I can't get on camera. It's just a little bit too big, but uh, here for digital joystick, you can see uh, pins one to four are forwards, back, left, and right. So these are going to be soldered on to. They are numbered. You can even see the numbers on the, the socket, which is nice. One, two, three, and four. Then we have pin six, which is this one. For button one, eight for ground, and nine for button two. So let's just strip a few of these. Let's try orange first. Oh, I hope these aren't aluminium. They are silvery, and they don't seem to be taking the twist very well. Uh, aluminium is used in wires because it's a good conductor, not as good as copper, but cheaper by far. But it doesn't take solder. That's not taking solder. You see, it just runs off pants. Right, well, that cable is a complete non-starter. Uh, I'm not going to be able to solder this. Is there something else I can do? These need to be crimped, that's the problem. Okay, what I've got here is a header pin kit. Uh, this is used for wiring up, uh, well, headers. Uh, it crimps on, but the metal that the pin itself is made out of uh, is solderable. So if I uh, put a pin on one of these wires so the wings fold flat over the insulation which holds the pin in place and then the bare wire itself goes into this thing which I can then crush and that should make electrical contact. Uh, it's decent, decently solid. I mean, this is terrible, but for the low-grade switching we're doing for the gamepad, it's no digital or analog data. It's just like human pressers on or off. That should work fine. And we should be able to get solder on the pin so that I can then Sold this uh, again. I am running out of hands because it's got to push into the solder pot. Okay, let's try and find something to hold this with. Go. So that one is pin one. Put these on camera. And there we have 
a robust joint. Okay, I think that actually, whoops, going to work. Okay, let's crimp up some more. You get these things in this ribbon, so I just need to pull a few off if I can find the end. There we go. And we're going to need uh, three more for the directions, two more for the buttons, and one for ground. So we cut there. Okay, so now we get to solder them. Good. Now blue goes into pin eight. Uh, is there any slack to let me get pin to pin eight? Get blue to pin eight? And yeah, I am also noticing that all these header pins are touching each other. So I'm going to have to do something about that. I think I'm going to have to desolder these and start again. Took a depressingly short amount of time to desolder. Okay, the issue is I didn't put any heat shrink on, so uh, let us both do that and also take off a bit more, uh, a bit more shrouding. Okay, I did one off camera just to make sure it would work, and you know, I wouldn't set fire to anything, and it appears to have done so quite nicely. So I'm just going to use the right colours. So we want about that much heat shrink. Push it up to about there, which exposes four or five millimetres of pin. And then we take our lighter And we lightly toast it. Perfect. It'll also help hold the wire on. Uh, I don't have any brown and white heat shrink, so I'm just going to use brown again. Uh, likewise with all the striped colours. Uh, the colours will help in making sure that everything's in the right place. I'll it's fairly obvious whether it's a coloured piece of wire or a striped piece of wire. Um, fantastic, my lighter is empty.
So here's a corresponding 9-pin plug from a different project. So if we plug that in, we should then be able to do continuity tests. Uh, I'll actually take the top off this. This is from my hydroponic setup, which I was unable to actually make keep plants alive, which is a bit of a problem with hydroponics. Uh, that is, it's a problem with the hydroponics if you can't keep plants alive. So, So here and here, yep. Actually, we can do the here, I think. Oh, and also I noticed that I wired, uh, blew up backwards, so. Good. Um, good. Anyone? Ah, orange is here. Uh, yeah, the order changes rather oddly. Yep. Uh, with the Ethernet between the two ends. Uh, that was not connected. This is green. Green, yep. Uh, not connected. Uh, blue and white. And blue, good. We have finally a electrical connection that will plug into the Amiga. Um, and yes, I will need to 3D print a plug for this. Uh, yeah, these won't work because of the wings, they're just too big. Alright, so we now need to do the other end. Which is going to be exactly the same thing, but uh, without the soldering. So, um, honestly, I'm just going to do that off camera. Okay. That wasn't too bad once I got the hang of it. Over here, I have some sockets in pin order. Over here, I have wired pins up to the PCB. So the pins will go in to the socket. That's not really making good contact. That's okay. I wonder if I got the sockets wrong. That's worked well. Why isn't this one? It is pushed all the way in. Hmm. That is kind of working. That's very loose. So is that. Ah, these aren't... You, these aren't all the way in, that's why. So I just need to push them in with a thing. There we go. And they latch into place. The little plastic things and the DuPont connectors hold the pins in place. Okay, that's better. So... Not much better. Ah, 
anyway, the advantage of having pins is that we can uh, rearrange the uh, what does what in the inevitable situation when I get the mapping screwed up. But let's actually do some mapping and figure out where things should go. So if I use the good old multimeter in continuity mode, black is common. Uh, actually, let's use the crocodile clips for this one. So this is going to be our test probe. Let's see what purple does. And black's hooked up to common, like so, so. Right, purple is left. Orange is down. Um, that's going to be back. Yellow is up. Red is B, that's going to be button two. And that means that green must be, uh, must be uh, ah, green is right. Am I missing one? Oh, green should be right. Oh, that's that came loose. That's why it wasn't working. Right, green is indeed right. So. Uh, I know why I'm confused about there being a small number of wires, which is that the wire for button B has in fact come off. That should have been connected here. So I'm going to have to find it and solder it back on. If I were a B button, what colour would I be? Uh, I am now quite ashamed of myself. That purple wire has got a bare end. Well, they all have bare ends. Here, yeah, here's a white wire. Now, has the track come off? Yeah, I can see a little bit of brown on the bottom of the wire, which is copper from the track that's come off. So we're going to have to expose some new copper. I'll get some zoom in this. Okay. Well, we have exposed quite a lot of copper in multiple tracks. I hope that's not going to come back to bite me. We can retin this. If I can figure out how to do it with, there we go, two hands. So 
So if I do that, that hasn't come. OK, we're going to have to put solder on this track. As a bit uh, bridging Yeah, that was me trying to solder myself. Okay, that looks good. Right, we'll put on one more uh, pin. I'm gonna show you how it's done. It's very similar to the uh, the, the sockets. I, in fact, I was putting those on incorrectly. What you do is the wire itself gets uh, held in place with the smaller set of wings that forms the electrical connection. So we fold those down and push really hard. And then the big wings hold the uh, grab the insulation. Okay, so multimeter. There should be a Yep. And we haven't shorted through to B. Excellent. That bit's done. White is A. Okay, so uh, let's stick the pins into a proper DuPont connector pin thing. We want the order to be yellow. Uh, that is distorted and won't go into the, the hole. this end. Right, yellow. Orange. This is uh, back. Ah, same thing again. You know, these solderless connections are so much less convenient than just soldering something with solder. But, you know, aluminium wires. If I had some proper multi-core cable, it would be a different matter. Nope. Really? That is not going in okay 
There we go. Uh, purple. Okay, and green. Right. Now, the other one is a three-way, and this is the two buttons and ground. So ground is black, and that one goes in the middle. We don't do that just yet. Button one is white. I think I may even have put that in backwards. Yes, I have. There's a little projection on one side of the pin that goes into the there we go, plastic latch and holds it in place. OK, so button one, ground, right, and button two. Distorted. It's now even more distorted. Okay, so we're done. So the wires come round to this side and connect to here. Now we want brown to match with yellow. Oops. These pins are very irregular. Okay, and this side we want uh, green to match with white. Is that actually okay? I think that's good enough. Um, now I was there is enough clearance for the connectors to go there. If I loop the wire around like this and kink it unpleasantly. That should provide a cable clamp. So then the back will. No, that's not fitting here. Okay, let's do it without a cable clamp and we'll just be careful. Uh, 
car. These things are getting in the way. I think we need to find a place for this space. Something's pressing the other side of the board. Okay, so. We want the wires to go roughly there. So let's just get out and on standby and just tape it in place. We only need it to be there while we're putting the back on. Once it's done, the back will hold everything in place. that. Good. Now I need to find where I put my screws and put them in, put them back in. This is the common wire. Uh, this blue one and this green one should be button B, I believe. No, A? Eh? No, there we go. So this one over here should be the other button. Good. And there is actually no possible way I'm going to be able to hold one probe on the ground, one probe on one of these, and press the button at the same time. So let's just cut straight to the chase and get the Amiga out. So here it is running Treasure Island Dizzy and let's plug the controller in and see what happens. Hopefully not exploding my Amiga. Well nothing bad's happened yet so let's try pushing some buttons. Ooh. This is working. Well, B doesn't do anything. Can I jump? Hmm. Uh, yes, apparently touching water kills you. And that's the end of the game. Oh yeah, I remember this. Uh, the Treasure Island Dizzy is brutal. There we go. And now we can jump left. Jumping's a bit awkward using the left and up, but that's how they did it in uh, the Amiga days. sure I can stop on the... there we go. Now I've picked up a coin. Good, well this is actually working. It's not bad. It's a lot better than it was uh, when it was the original game controller with the rubber buttons. 
this is quite usable and is certainly capable of playing games to test things. Hmm. It might have been worthwhile mapping one of these buttons to up so that I can get a more intuitive jump. Of course, if you go down that route, you eventually end up with a complete Arduino inside the thing uh, and on the fly keyboard remapping using the extra buttons. But I don't want to do that. Oh, and apparently I'm dead again. Anyway, that works. It could be improved. I think a couple of an extra millimeter on these buttons would do a world of good. Printing some new ones takes moments, so that the most difficult bit is taking it apart and trying to get the cable and so on wedged back in the right place. The D-pad is fine. So I can easily hold jump, press, I can easily tap jump while holding left or right, which is a good thing. I'm not really a fan of D-pads, but they're better than joysticks. Anyway, that is now done, so I am going to wrap it. Why did I just die? I have no idea. Yeah, this game is tough. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please let me know what you think in the comments. I don't know yet how many pieces it will have been in. Yes. Anyway, see you all next time.